Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we will be recreating nails I've previously done by picking them out of my nail jar. I've seen so many people suggest this, but I wanted to save it for kind of like a little special occasion because today I actually hit 500,000 subscribers, so I thought it'd be like a special little thing that we can do. And of course take this opportunity to thank you guys so much. I feel like it came up so much faster than I ever thought. Every time I post a video, it is so insane to me how many people watch like right away. I remember when my videos didn't even hit like a thousand views in a day. So again, thank you guys so much. I feel like the number kind of just symbolizes sort of like this little community that we have that hopefully is just really positive for everyone. So really just thank you guys so much. And as a thank you, I have pulled my last sealed poly gel kit from my collaboration with McCart out from my vault aka my closet. This was limited edition, so there will not be any more that will be made. To enter this giveaway, click the link in my description box where it is indicated for it. This giveaway is pretty much open to everyone, but any restrictions and the terms and stuff will be provided where my giveaway is being held. Since this is a sealed box. I don't know if this has the correct brush in it. If you remember when this was going on, a different brush accidentally made it into some of my poly gel kits. So if that is the case with this one, I apologize in advance, but nothing I can really do about that. I'm going to leave the giveaway open for two weeks because I feel like that's a good amount of time for most of my subscribers to be able to see this video and enter if you choose to do so you will be able to enter daily, so do keep that in mind. But moving on from that, let's get back to my jar of nails. So if you don't know, I have pretty much collected all of the nails that I have worn or put on in the past, I would say over two years. So this is about two years worth of nails. This does include like press-ons that I've had that I didn't make, some test nails. Really, if I've put this on my nails or I've like done a design on it, it's in here, which is a lot for two years. <laughs> Could be a little longer than that, but what made me first start it was I had sort of accumulated a lot of clipped off nails in one area of my room because I don't know what it is about me, but I like to take my nails off on the floor. It's just more comfortable for me to do that. So I had this like box that I clipped my nails over and filed over so that I wouldn't get it everywhere. And at one point I just realized that I had like, I don't know, 30 nails in this box, so I decided to collect them, put them in a jar, and ever since, I've kept them. I feel like it wouldn't be any fun if I did one hand of the same design, so of course we're going to do five designs from five different nails. I'm a little nervous because I know I have some really intricate designs in here, but I'm also really excited because I think my skills have progressively gotten a little better and I'm really hoping to sort of improve the designs that I pull out, not just recreate them. And I'm hoping that if I pull out any that aren't super great, I can sort of like redeem myself by doing them a lot better. So here's what inside of this jar looks like. There's going to be a lot of hair and sort of, I don't know, some like crusties in here because like I said, I take my nails off on the floor and what's on the floor? Tons of dog hair. I'm gonna shake this up a little bit just to make sure we have a good mix and it's not like oldest to newest. Are we ready to do the first nail? Okay. Ah, I'm so nervous. Okay, I'm just gonna... What is it? Oh, it's a drip. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest, I have no clue which set this is from and I probably won't for most of these. Most of these nails have been clipped off because that's what I do when I remove them. I don't usually just pop them off whole. So a lot of the time we get just, you know, half nails. It kind of looks like there could have been something at the top or I don't know, but this is just part of the fun. We're going to recreate it, but you know, make it better. This design is from a previous subscriber's Draw My Nails. It is from a Halloween edition, I think. Not this past Halloween, but the Halloween before. And here is what the original design looked like and how the original nail was before it has obviously been chopped off. I've been thinking a lot about this video and I think that I don't want to just recreate everything exactly as is. I wanna do these nail designs and put a little bit of a spin on them. That way it's not, you know, exactly doing everything that you guys have already seen me do before. I'm fairly certain that I had just used these Enoch Couture tips. 
I know I'd use this long coffin shape. I'm gonna just wipe off my nail. I do have a base coat on already. Here we are. And I'm going to just wipe the inside of the tip and attach it using this DIY gel. I love this gel. It makes it so easy to apply tips. And I'm just going to put that on. Trim down the length just a tad. There we go, that's a little bit more sharp looking. I've been liking just a lot sharper of an edge lately. I think it'll be really pretty to do a pink jelly under, especially because this shade almost has like a little bit of a neon orange hue. I think for summer, I wanna bring jelly back. I feel like we didn't spend enough time on it when jelly nails first really became popular. Cause look how pretty, I love it. I'm gonna do two coats of this. For the drip, I'm going to use this McCart liner because it is so much brighter than it looks on the label. Then for the drips, I'm just gonna sort of make some blobs with some lines and then connect them all together. I'm connecting them in just a way that makes uh, sense in my head because I want a lot of room for the rhinestones and glitter. I don't want to do another layer of this since we are putting on rhinestones. I don't want this part to be like super, super thick. So I'm just trying to do a good first even coat. That way we don't have to do it again, build it up. I want the rhinestones and everything to really shine underneath. So I'm gonna use this Ella Nailed It gel. It is a sort of golden orange yellow top coat and I think it'll look really nice on top. Let's so put some of that out. Could almost look, I guess, green in some places. I know that these aren't going to be, you know, exact recreations, but I think this will be still fun since you guys will have already seen these designs. Because I did only start keeping all of the nails in the past couple of years, I feel like that's fairly recent. Unfortunately, I never kept any old, old, old nails from like five years ago. I wish I had kept them from the start, but nothing I can do about that now. To adhere the rhinestones, we're gonna use the Kira Sky Blinket Gel. I've been really liking this gel. It is really, really thick. So I'm just gonna put it on the same way I did the glitter top coat all at once, because I don't think the rhinestone should move around too much. I think we'll have time to just sit them all on. I got the smallest rhinestones in orange that I had out. Hopefully they'll be small enough to actually, you know, like look how I'm hoping. Look at how pretty they look blurred anyway. I'm going to use these ones here. These are orange, iridescent, so they do kind of reflect green, but I think they're really pretty and I think they'll be perfect. And I'm gonna to try to do this a little bit uniform so that it looks, you know, intentional and nice. So far, so good. Okay, I hope the drips look how I'm hoping they will. Hopefully there's enough room. Now I'm just filling in any little gaps that I can, you know, make it work. I'm really focusing on how it looks from the front because it's better to sort of have it look good from the front and have a couple little side gaps like that opposed to it hanging off because that will make your life difficult if you have uh, longer hair. Okay, what do we think? I actually love it. I wish I had some smaller rhinestones in orange, but I'm actually really happy with how this looks so far. I mean, so far as in we're not almost done. Uh, I'm gonna cure this and then we'll put a nice little top coat on the pink and the snail will be done. For top coat, I'm gonna use the Kira Sky Ultimate Top Coat and I use this one when I want a thinner top coat. It's almost like liquidy. And what do you guys think? Obviously I know it's a different design, but I love how this one turned out. You know, I had to add my pink flair to it. Pink makes everything better. I'm really happy with it. So let's go on to the next nail. Okay, next up, I'm just gonna pull one off the top. Not looking. What is this? Okay, this. <gasps> Oh my gosh. I think this is a nail from around the time that I had my collab because that is my hollow powder, I believe, on there. So yeah, okay, so let's do some hollow. I guess that's a good throwback because if you've watched my videos for a really long time, you probably know I used to do hollow on like every single set and I tried to stray away from that because I didn't want to do the same thing over and over, but I'm really excited to do it again. This next nail is special. This was the set I wore on my promo for my collaboration kit with McCart. So it is simple, but we're gonna add a little bit something extra to it. Of course, it's hollow and it matches the background today. I believed I also used this long coffin shape. I might've used the McCart ones, but 
I'm gonna use the gel ones today because my cards are plastic. And I'm gonna do my middle finger so I have a little bit more room to work with the design that I'm gonna put on top. We'll start with this one by filing off the ridge at the end. So something I have realized recently, I never understood why my nail tips at the edge didn't look sharp until I started filing them this way. Maybe I can show you to the side. I do it towards me like that and that makes it look so much sharper. And hopefully you can see what I mean by like sharper looking. This one is the one I just filed. The other one is just how it comes. I think it just makes it look a little bit more refined, but that's personal preference. We are going to use my purple poly gel, which again, this is not a available kit anymore. This was a limited edition, but if you skip the intro, then I am giving a kit away. So check the description for that. I'm starting with a base coat so that our poly gel can stick underneath. I'm gonna do the Femi Beauty method today where we put the poly gel underneath the entire nail for the color. Then I'm gonna put my purple in here, there we are, and spread it out. I feel like it's easiest to do this with a stand like I'm using, otherwise you're probably gonna get your fingers all sticky. Of course, there's a hair. I don't even know if I can blame that one on the dogs. I'll take that off and put it on the nail. And there we are, pretty much. And I am going to use this clip because I find it's actually very useful. Except I do it more towards the bottom just to keep it on well and then I'll cure it, and there we are. Is that crooked? Oh my God, did I do it again? I don't know, whatever. So I'm just going to wipe the top off and then also the back because it will be sticky back here. For the top now, I'm gonna use a McCart top coat just because I know that the hollow powder works with it really, really well. Now we're gonna use the hollow powder. This again was from my kit, voila. Now how hollow powder works best for me is to make sure you wipe your top coat really good everywhere. And I use rubbing alcohol usually. And then I kind of let it dry, not too long though. And then I just get my finger, dip it in the hollow powder and rub it on. This way, I feel like it goes on smoothest. Sometimes with powders and stuff, some people don't like to rub off the sticky layer or anything and they think it makes it stick better. But I think that this is a lot smoother looking in my opinion. And you do want to re-dip kind of in sections to make sure you get like the full scope of how it can look. And, oh, it's so pretty. I miss doing hollow. Before I put the top coat back on, I'm just going to try to brush away any extra dust. I'm gonna top coat it again to seal it all in. And just because you have brushed any excess powder away doesn't mean that a couple small little flecks can't get into your top coat when you are doing this. So if you are worried about that, make sure to wipe off your brush before you stick it back in or have a designated top coat for stuff like topping glitter and powders and you know anything that can sort of have residual flakes. I keep wanting to say flakes, I don't know why. And voila, there is pretty much just the bare nail, but we're gonna do a little design on top of it. I figure in honor of this video, we can do a little, you know, written 500K design. I'm gonna use this gel liner. I haven't really done many words, numbers, or letters before, so I'm kind of just winging it. This absolutely could take a couple tries. Yep, nope, that definitely does not look right. A little thick. I want to cure it because I feel like that looks right, but if I end up off with the spacing, zero, zero, okay, I think it's fine. I'm going to cure it. It'll be fine. Definitely going to be a lot of touching up on these. Not even going to lie, those zeros took me forever, but hopefully this K should be fairly simple. I want to put a little bit of like a colored glitter on top. So this is a reflective gel and it's purple. I figured we'd match, you know, just the little tone there. And this will also just give it a little bit of like an extra pow. This should be a lot easier though, since it's just tracing over what we already have. Hopefully it looks good. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be much of a color difference, but adding a little glitter never hurts, especially the reflective glitter. I love reflective glitter. Lastly, I'm gonna put a top coat on this. And I was gonna put some rhinestones on it, but now I don't know. I think I'm actually going to leave it. I think it looks good as is, and I don't wanna just like get too crazy with it to where you can't even tell what's happening anymore. And here we are, absolutely 
love it. I'll never not love that hollow. I think purple is also one of my favorite colors to do with the hollow. I think it just looks so good. A very celebratory nail. Okay, I'm honestly hoping to get something with some more nail art or some charms or something because I feel like they've been pretty plain so far. But to be fair, I didn't really start doing more intricate stuff until I think like this past year. So, oh. What is this? Oh, I never did this set on camera, but this was my Halloween set from this past year. So this is pretty recent. And I also custom mixed this acrylic that I had used on it. So we will have to recreate that because I'm pretty sure I used it all and I didn't save any. And hopefully I still have those stickers somewhere. This nail is from this past Halloween. It's funny how I picked out two Halloween nails, but this is a obviously a Corpse Bride one. I had some stickers and thankfully I still have some stickers, but I did make this acrylic myself. I mixed it and I remember a lot of people asking for a tutorial. So this is good that I get to show you guys how I did it. I'm gonna use my clear from Young Nails because I just have a ton of this stuff and we're only gonna be doing one nail. So I really don't need that much. The main star of the show is this glitter. It's one of my favorites. It's one of the ones that ends up looking like a UV blue reflect. And I put tons of that in here. But again, this is only a little bit. A very, I was about to say serving, very small serving of acrylic. That's, don't need acrylic. <laughs> Next, I know I put some glow in the dark powder in there because I was going back home over Halloween to see a friend's drag show and I put the glow in the dark powder so that my nails would glow under the black light and stuff and they did. I remember that, except this just made a mess opening. Then I know I put a little bit of pigment in there, so I'm going to use this rainbow blue, which is like a hollow blue kinda. But I do think I wanna improve it a little bit and put a little bit more blue than I did last time, just cause I think it would've been a little bit prettier with a little bit of a brighter color. Let's mix this up. And I think this is what I'm gonna go with. So what I actually done for this nail was I did it with acrylic. I put acrylic on the underside and attached it that way because when I did this, I did not have a lot of time. It was like the middle of the night and I had a flight the next morning, but I had a very specific vision for the nails. So we'll do that again. I don't do this method a ton because full cover tips like this, this one is from Enail Couture. This is my absolute favorite shape. I think this is the extreme square. I need to actually buy more of these because I've gone through almost the entire package of them. They're that much my favorite, but in general, all full cover tips should be a little flexible. And when you put acrylic on the underneath, you take away that flexibility, but you don't quite get enough strength from the acrylic because the acrylic is so thin. So when you hit it, you end up breaking it because there's no flexibility and then you don't end up getting enough strength because the acrylic is so thin. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna put some of this tip primer on. If there's even, nope, there's like nothing left in here. It's been a while since I've used this stuff. Have to go find another bottle. We'll just pretend right now. Womp womp. Okay, so how you do this basically is you do your monomer and your acrylic kind of pretty much like you normally would, but you put it on the back of the tip. You have to make sure that you don't do it too thick though because otherwise you'll get it everywhere. There we go. Oh wow, that's a bit brighter than the other one, but I actually like it more like that. I would do personally just a little bit of a thicker bead. You need to make sure you get it all over the entire side. That way it shows the color. Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of thicker bead. You're gonna put that on here. And then I'm going to take it off of the stand really quick and the acrylic will be wet and you're gonna to want to just hold it on there essentially until it dries. Don't push down too much, but push down enough so that it's in the proper place. If you have any squeezing out from the back, just make sure to just pull that up. And you don't have to hold this down for a super long time, but it will take, you know, a little bit longer <laughs> to dry since it's not being like exposed to air or anything, but you know, hold it down until it's stuck and then make sure you don't bump it. Then if any spots are looking thin, you can always just go back and add, especially sometimes on the edges, it'll sort of like sink down. Okay, don't get me wrong. I feel like this sort of matches the color scheme a little bit better, but I like the brighter color personally. And now for the stickers, I got these off of AliExpress. I will link them if they are still available. And I'm out of butterflies, so I think I'm gonna go with the crows. I really, really thought about trying to draw this, but I don't think I'm at that level yet. Maybe after like, I don't know, another year, I think I'll be able to start doing some more cartoon type stuff, but 
That's definitely something I'm gonna need to work on for a little bit longer. And we will top coat this. Hopefully if you've never seen that way to do full cover tips and acrylic, then now you know how. It's a super, super quick way. And it's good, especially if there's like an acrylic you wanna use, but you don't necessarily want to have to sculpt it. You know what I mean? I apparently still had some glow dust on my hand, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, so here we are with that. Definitely a bit of a brighter tone on this one, but I almost feel like it still works. Let's move on. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to feel out for something with like a charm or rhinestone. I don't think I'm very good at this. Okay, I think this has something. What is it? Uh oh, I pulled out two. Okay, I accidentally pulled out two because they were kind of stuck together. So this pink one is pretty recent, like last month. And then this other one is a tip with some foil on it. So I think because I picked two, I think I'm gonna put these ones back and we're gonna do a redraw. You know, this is my video, so I get to make the rules. So let's do a redraw on that. Okay. Oh, pretty. We have a strawberry cow nail very cute i actually love this and i would love to do a set fully like this at some point i'm excited i loved that design i think i can make it better i think we should do this with acrylic because why not i did this nail when i did like 10 different designs using kira sky's liners and it's probably one of my favorite ones that i did but looking at it now, it looks a little beginner-ish and I think I can definitely do better. So I'm gonna do it a bit different. I'm gonna use some of my favorite tips as of lately, the tapered square from Anna Acrylics. This nail do be looking a little rough. My hands were so dry and I was getting a bunch of hangnails after washing my hands so many times this weekend and doing some drywall because you guys see the background behind me. What had happened was I decided it was time to change it up and I took down the wallpaper I had there. And whenever they built this room, because the room I film in used to be a garage, it was converted. When we bought the house, they flipped it, you know the usual. I don't think that on a chunk of the wall they cleaned the dust off before they painted and a ton of the paint came off down to the drywall on just like one panel of it. So that's great. So I had to skim the wall to fix it so I could paint to redo my background. Turned into way bigger of a project than I wanted or anticipated. Anyway, I didn't wear any gloves. Sometimes I do because I just don't want my hands to dry out, but I didn't. And then they got really dry and now... They're cracked. Anyway, I'm rambling. I have my monomer. I've been using my Kira Sky monomer still as of recently because I have had that one open for quite a while and I'm nearing the end of it. So I wanna use it before I open any more. I'm gonna be using this Mia Secret Cover Beige Acrylic Powder. I don't really love this formula as much, but I really like the shade of acrylic for a nude. So I'm gonna start with it to do the elongated natural nail part of like a French tip. Trying to be super careful. I think I'm gonna see if I can use this to cut out a nicer edge. Ooh, look at that, so much better. There we go. I feel like sometimes when you've been using products that just really work for you, you can almost overestimate your skills a little bit when it's also the products. <laughs> I was like, you know what, even though, you know, this acrylic is a lot runnier than I'm used to, I feel like I've gotten better at acrylic. I think it'll be fine. And then I do this and it's not. But that is a much better smile line than what I had done. Okay, and then just a little cleanup. And then I'm gonna use this Model 1's acrylic powder. This is a reflective silver. And I'm gonna put it around this. So we have silver like I had in my design. And this does not have to be perfect. I once again will be doing the thing I always do where I try to trust the process and it may or may not work out. So I won't file any of this silver. When we file it, hopefully it'll just make like a nice even line around it. You feel? It doesn't always work out like that, but hopefully today it will. Yeah, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Now I'm hoping that the cow spots go a lot smoother because I will be using my Anna Acrylics. And if you've watched any of my Anna Acrylics video, you know that her acrylic sets up fairly quickly, which I personally really like. So hopefully, hopefully this won't be like a, you know, two hour nail. And then for this, I'm just gonna get kind of small blobs like so. Kind of let them set up. 
And for the most part, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. I kind of just wanna make sure it is like rounded blob and not any sharp edges and not feathered. Cow spots are essentially random. And so I don't wanna do too much. I don't wanna make them all the same, but I also don't want it to like look like it's like bleeding into the other color or have any like super sharp edges. Cause I don't think cow spots have many like really sharp edges, you know? And it's fine if it just kind of like sets up kind of high because we will file that down. I really love, if you guys can't tell yet, like the reveals with filing down a design in acrylic. It's like one of my favorite things. I'm hoping it'll translate. Then I'm gonna take this Model One's white and overlay that on top of the pink and fill in the gaps. And here's the chunky nail that we're gonna hope files down into a nice design. But I actually have something else planned for this nail that hopefully will be really fun. I also want to make a cow charm for it. So I wanted to wait to try these and do a video, but I'm just gonna break them out today because I feel like that'll be the easiest thing to do. So these are supposed to be like sculptable gels that are fairly solid. It's like solid gel, but they're colored kind of like a clay. I got them on AliExpress. Carved glue is what it says. And I'm hoping that this will make it fairly easy to make a charm today. Let's just open it up and see. Oh, okay. I wanna to touch it. I know I probably shouldn't. I'm gonna to touch it once. Oh, that's really solid. I think these have been sitting there. I don't wanna say even too long, maybe like three or four months, but I haven't opened them. So I don't know if they're dried out at all. I knew I was gonna to wanna to touch it. So I'm gonna see if I can, oh my gosh, that is really hard. Like I think maybe it's dried out a little bit or it's supposed to be that hard, but it's really hard, but still malleable. Maybe it's one of those things that needs like some kneading before it softens up. Going to use this as a little table. Use some rubbing alcohol to make it not quite as sticky. There we go. We'll definitely have to go over that white a little bit. I think that's good for the base of the head. I'm gonna cure it that way we don't mess anything up as we continue. I feel like when I opened this up, there was already stuff in it. We know that my house is full of dog hair, but I still feel like all of that stuff on it wasn't me. Maybe some ears. And then I guess we'll just have to see when we open the rest of them if they're also dried out or if it's supposed to be that way. Okay, it's kind of looking like cinnamon roll, not a cow. All right, so here we are, cinnamon roll or a cow, I don't know. Opening up a new color. Oh my gosh, that is so much pinker than I thought, but it matches this, so that's fine. We'll wait though, because I was gonna use that for the snout. Okay, I had a couple more of a different brand. Oh, this one's so much softer. <gasps> This one is so much softer. Like this one just mushes. Okay, well, let's see if this helps at all. The black, not gonna lie, this looks terrible. Quite literally, absolutely horrendous. This is so bad. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it. It's terrible because it is and isn't coming out like I sketched. Ooh, it's so bad. It is so bad. And those just look like mouse droppings but they're supposed to be the horns. I'm going to cure this begrudgingly. Like I had said, I think in my last video, I will definitely do a whole video making charms. So this is as far as we're gonna get with this specific product today. While that is curing, let's file this down and see if it's gonna be the reveal that we hoped for. So that definitely did not turn out how I wanted. I feel like not only just because it didn't file how I want, but the white almost looks like it mixed with the pink weird. I don't know, maybe I didn't let it sit for long enough, but I'm just going to speed through sort of touching this nail up because it looks wonky and it does not look good right now. So let's just do that really quick. Okay, there's that. Is it an improvement? Nope. <laughs> Yep, doesn't look that much better, except this is an acrylic. I don't know if uh, Mr. Cow over here is gonna be able to be salvaged. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. I realized I had picked up these buttons at one point in time to sort of use as charms. They do have like little loops on the back, you know, cause they're buttons. But I think I'm gonna put one of these on instead. I tried to file my cow that I made a little bit and that gel just crumbled. 
so we're gonna have to revisit that. So this should be a good substitution for now. These are the options. Obviously they look a little big, so I think I'm just going to either stick with this one or this one. Let's see, that might cover up a little too much. I think that one would look good. So we'll just cut the little loop off the back. Okay, I'll go find it. Uh-oh. That's actually perfectly fine that that comes off because I was wanting to change the black part to pink to match. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here to make sure that everything stays together when I pop it in. There we go, very cute. So pretty. I'm gonna use the Cura Sky Bling It Gel to attach it and it's okay. I know it doesn't look great with my cut cuticle, but it is what it is. I am going to top coat the cow just cause I think that'll make it look a little nicer. Definitely did not come out like I had hoped. I had really hoped to make the charm, but we know here that things definitely don't always go as planned. That's okay. So here it is now against the original. How do we feel? Do we like the original better? I don't know. But let's move on to our final nail. For our last nail, I think I'm going to have my husband grab one from the jar. So let me call him in. You can't look while you do it. Okay, pick something. What is it? I don't know. Here it is. I think this one is fairly recent. I think this is from a secret nail affair video. I think that was from this past Christmas maybe. I don't know. So let's do it. So I've been having a hard time thinking about how I'm going to do this one because it was pretty plain. It was just a French tip with a glitter tip using a couple of the Christmas Secret Nail Affair acrylic. And obviously that was pretty recent. So I'm going to stick to the original outline of the nail essentially being the French tip and the same acrylics, but I'm going to change the shape just to match the other ones because they're you know, coffin or square, and I feel like that might throw the vibe off. My goal is to have it be this, but extra because it was pretty plain. I did already put on my tip and everything. So I'm gonna grab my acrylic. I love this one. And when I used it recently, I checked on the website and I'm pretty sure it's pretty discounted now since it was a Christmas collection. Okay, just gonna do my regular little French tip, trying to film it and also work with gravity. Just gonna build it up a little bit more before I use the little cutout. All right, let's just cut it out really quick. Then for the tip, this is tinsel time. It's so pretty. Listen, I am like 95% sure this is what I used. So I've had these really pretty like laser hearts for quite some time and I've wanted to use them and you can tell I've tried before, but it's such a thick piece of plastic that it hasn't really worked before, but I'm gonna try again today. So I would love to use it. I feel like it would look so pretty on top of the nail. Like, wouldn't that be so cool? So I'm gonna try to just like measure it out almost and trim. That looks like an okay size. To try to get it to stick, I'm gonna use some bling it gel because this stuff is super thick and strong. Set it on top, okay, okay. Then I have a clear stamper and I'm gonna hold it down and hopefully like conform the edges so that it all sticks. I'm gonna just sort of prep, turn my light on. And I have a little trick now where I can kind of do it under. So hopefully it'll work. This is under a pane of glass. I I think it might have kind of worked. There's a couple edges that I need to glue down, but I think we might actually do it. Doesn't look quite as clear as I thought it would with that design, but I'm gonna put a clear cap over it and we'll file and see if that helps at all. Some Young Nails Speed Clear. Ah, did it just lift? No, 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 no. I feel like it just lifted like all by itself. I'm going to file this down and hopefully it looks how I hoped. It's filed down, but I don't know if it's gonna look good. Next time I would definitely make the plastic piece shorter so that it doesn't end up getting filed and sort of like open up this edge here. Now that I'm gonna say it wrong, as usual, Swarovski isn't selling to the public. I was in Michael's the other day and I saw these rhinestones. And normally I'm not a huge fan of rhinestones that don't have much of a reflect to them, but I just thought these ones were so beautiful. This is like what's replaced Sephora like at craft stores. These just looked like extra beautiful to me. They're like crystal clear and almost 
look the most like diamonds I've seen in a rhinestone. So I really wanted to use them. I got a couple different sizes and even look, they're like, hey, do your nails with them. And then I also just got another color because I just thought they were so pretty and they weren't too bad on price. I believe that these were seven or eight dollars, which it's not cheap, but it's also not terrible, especially for like this, 154 for $8. And I think they're really, really pretty. I think that might be worth it to me, but I'm really excited to use them and see. They just look like extra shiny to me. For the crystals, I'm going to do just a little design around the smile line and I'm gonna have it kind of taper off. Putting the rhinestone gel on, I feel like bring out some of the reflectiveness of the heart strip that we put in, so I have hope. Start with a big rhinestone. So pretty. All right, might be a little chunky, but that's fine. Okay, look at how shiny these are. I don't know, very happy with them. And a final top coat. Okay, it did show so much better with a shiny coat on it. You can see that reflectiveness, much better. And it actually looks super pretty in person too. And here is the recreated nail, obviously different, but still the same. Looking at this now, I'm realizing I used the wrong shade for the natural nail looking part, but it's fine. I still think it looks good and I'm happy with how it turned out. And here are all the nails with their original counterparts. Let me know what you guys think of this. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I've been saving this concept for a while to do for a special occasion. So I really hope that you guys like them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys liked the video. Even though I didn't end up picking anything that was like super crazy, I still hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to enter my giveaway if you want to. <laughs> Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for 500,000 subscribers. That is insane. I still can't really like grasp that number and how many people that is but I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.